The Cardinals offseason is underway, but today we're not going to talk so much about rumors and stuff like that. Instead, we've got a special guest on the show. Cardinals infielder, outfielder, super fun, energetic, fan favorite that we all fell in love with last season, Richie Palacios. Joins us today to talk about life in the big leagues, getting traded to St. Louis last year, and what the future looks like for this team in 2024. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor. Born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio, and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We do want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also come to YouTube and join us there. Like, subscribe, comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button. So you know when the new episodes are posted because this is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So once again, uh, switch things up a little bit today. We were able to Peel Richie Palacios off of the uh, the links. He's going golfing a little bit later today, Richie. I uh, appreciate you making time to uh, join us here today to talk some baseball, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, JD. I'm happy to be here. All right. Uh, first and foremost, I want to get into uh, what you've been doing in the offseason so far. Obviously, we talked golfing. That's what guys like to do. Uh, what are some other things you've been up to since uh, the season ended? Uh, I took a couple weeks off, spent some time with the family. Uh, and then started getting back into my workouts. Uh, now I'm pretty much full go, uh, working out during the week and then just recovering uh, on the weekends and usually trying to play golf once a week just to be able to hang with the boys and stuff like that and, and enjoy some time together. So that's been my schedule in the, in the past couple of weeks. All right. Um, now tell me a little bit about this. I know you're not going to be able to see it on the screen right here, but uh, I retweeted out. I saw you doing some modeling. Some modeling, Richie. D don't laugh. You ain't got to be ashamed of that. I mean, when I'm you're not. good looking, Trust and me, you I'm can not. Do that, that's great. Uh, how, how long have you been modeling? And uh, is this something that like, you really have a, a major interest in? Is it like fashion and something that uh, is big to you? I mean, growing up in New York City, fashion is always a, is always a major thing. I mean, if you come around with your friends with some terrible outfits, you're going to hear it. So <laughs> everyone learns how to dress uh, from that, just from all the, the trash talking. But yeah, I mean, fashion's always been uh, interesting to me. Um, I've always loved it. And I was able to get contacted with some people that I was able to model for the first time, um, pretty much like outside of doing a photo shoot for baseball. So it was definitely a crazy experience. Um, I got some tips from a lot of the models that were there. So it was a lot easier. They helped me with my with my walk, so they call there it. There you go. I, yeah, I mean, we all take it for granted that you guys, it's not that easy to strut in front of all these people in different clothes that you're not used to. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you get a very similar adrenaline to pregame uh, for a baseball game. Obviously, there wasn't as many people there, but it was a really small venue. Everyone's right on top of you. And you're just you're just walking there, showing off uh, whatever outfit you got there, and and you want to make sure you do it well because these designers take a lot of time in, in making these these outfits and making these uh pretty much. So you you want to make sure you're doing it right. Absolutely, and it, it's a great video if you guys like butt cheeks because like you see Richie walk past, and you can see on Twitter, and then somebody's butt just comes right past like there, just cheeks. So you get that and you get Richie's face. So it's a great video. So if you guys want to check it out, make sure you give him a follow on his Twitter X page. And he's got uh, he's got that video up for. I've also retweeted that. All right. Well, let's get into some baseball. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about growing up, man, because uh, I'm the older brother of a younger brother in my household. And we played ball, but we were four years apart. Uh, talk about growing up in like a sibling rivalry with you and your brother, Josh, who obviously we got to know a little bit more about during that series against Pittsburgh where you guys had that awesome series together and you guys are trading home runs. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, um, obviously the sibling rivalry is always there. Uh, the younger brother always wants to be better than the bigger brother, do more than the bigger brother. So 
Uh, it's always been a major part of, of how competitive we are. Just growing up, being able to compete, even when we were a young age, it, it brings that fire in you um, to be able to compete at the highest level. So it's been an awesome thing for me, being able to have an older brother that has experienced things before me and pretty much paved the way for me. It's been a lot easier for me to be able to um, to go do some things because I had someone that had already done it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and you guys are only like two years apart, so you were probably on teams together at some points growing up too, right? Uh, yeah, every now and then my dad would let me play with his team. Um, not all the time, uh, obviously, because they had players on their team that were good. So every now and then they would let me go up and play uh, play with his team, uh, like a celebrity celebrity day where I got to play with the older guys. But it definitely it definitely helped me uh, pretty much try and translate my game to guys that were bigger and stronger than me. Now you talked about uh, you know him doing some things ahead of you, which was able to kind of give you advice on how how to handle things. You got taken by Cleveland in the third round. Were you surprised or disappointed by where you were selected? And I always like to ask this question: What were you doing the day of the draft when that went down? Yeah, so for me, I mean, no, I wasn't surprised or disappointed. I was just excited uh, to be able to start my pro career. Um, wherever I got drafted, I would have been excited to start my pro career. Um, but it was a blessing to be to be drafted in the third round. Um, and for me, I didn't want to, you know, throw a whole party and all. I mean, I've seen some of the draft days with my brother and how crazy they were and how some guys didn't get selected where they thought they were, didn't get selected mm -hmm. at all. So I pretty much kept it very close to home, just me and my family. Uh, my brother was out playing, so he wasn't able to be there. But um, right. just my family, my dad, my mom, and, and my dad's best friend. And we just stayed in the house and just sitting there watching the draft, just waiting for calls. It was pretty nerve wracking, but um, after my name got called, it was it was a lot easier to to release some stress. Was was Cleveland somebody you thought was coming after you, or was there were they somebody who just kind of popped up at the last minute and were like, you know, we're going to take you? Uh, no, I mean they were interested, but you you know everyone's interested, so you never really know. Um, it's mm -hmm. funny though because our my college coaches uh, out at Towson University, they all had one team that they picked um, that they thought was going to draft me right before I left um, for the college season. And one of my coaches actually chose Cleveland. <laughs> so we, oh, thought yeah? had, we thought he had an insider, but he said it was just a straight guess. <laughs> ah, I got you. Uh, so back to your brother on this, on this whole draft portion of it, because your brother got taken twice, but he was a fourth rounder the second time around. So how much grief did you give him? Because you, you trumped him by one round. Did you get to uh, needle him a little bit about that? No, no, I wouldn't really talk much about that. Um, I mean, at the time, yeah, but now it's that has nothing to do with anything, really. We're sure. we're just going and trying to have the best careers ever. So, obviously, when we have better games against each other, we we definitely talk trash. But the draft was cool and all, but uh, now it's the real thing. All right. Well, coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about your time in the minor leagues because uh, there was a, a moment there where you didn't play for a long time because of things. So we're going to get into that about you getting called up. And obviously, we're going to talk about uh, your trade to St. Louis last year and uh, some of the things going on with the Cardinals right now. So we'll get into more with that with Richie Palacios right here on Locked on Cardinals. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, your new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So that's $100 and $150 if your team wins. So let me put it out there mathematically for you. Five bucks, you win that bet, they throw in $150 for you. That's pretty good. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, that's just one of the reasons why there's no better time to get in on this action. They got a very simple and easy to use app. That way you've got the wide range of betting options available right at your fingertips, spreads, player props, over-unders, all that fun stuff. We got the new slate of NFL games starting up on Thursday. Uh, not the greatest game in the world, Carolina Panthers at the Chicago Bears, but uh, still, it's football and we love football. So we're going to uh, we're gonna watch that game. And these are the kind of games too that you can make them more interesting and more fun to watch by putting a little bit of money on player props. You know, Justin Fields is supposed to be back at quarterback for Chicago. You think he's going to run rampant all over Carolina? Put some money where your mouth is. Bears favored by three and a half right now. Later in the week, Niners at Jag and Jaguars are going to be in Germany on Sunday morning. Browns at Ravens is a good one. Lions at Chargers. So a lot of NFL action coming up, and uh, you can be a part of it by visiting FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL.
Once again, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. You can leave comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter anytime you want. Your feedback always welcome and encouraged. Again, we're talking with St. Louis Cardinals infielder, outfielder, Richie Palacios uh, joining us here today. Uh, coming out of college, because uh, I want to get into what it was like in the minor leagues for you, because you had a, a, a different path because of things that went on that were out of your control. Because you come out of college, you light it up that first year, you hit 361. And then you get hurt. It was a, a labrum tear. Am I correct? Labrum correct. tear is what went on. And you miss that year. And then the whole world shuts down. We have the pandemic. And you are robbed of the season as a minor leaguer at the time in 2020. So two years, you weren't really on the field professionally. Like, how do you overcome something like that mentally when the, you know, one of the most important things in your life, your profession is just kind of ripped away from you? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was definitely the hardest time in my life when it came to baseball, being not being able to perform, and then being able to just you're just hearing about everyone during the season, all the accomplishments, accomplishments they're having, and all the fun they're having, and then you're just like at rehab every day. So like, it's truly tough um, on your brain, to be honest, tough on your mind. Um, but for me, it was just being able to have short term goals and be able to look forward to certain things um, step by step, and and that making the process a lot definitely a lot easier and then for me taking off for two years I thought it'd be impossible to come back and and be right in the groove but uh, for me it was just practicing you know competing in practice um, and challenging myself in practice uh, not just doing the easy stuff like front toss but like actually challenging myself with machine work and hard velo and stuff like that so when I was able to play again like I wasn't I have, didn't miss a step you know I was challenging myself in practice so whenever I was able to play in the game um, it was a lot easier transition than, you know, just doing easy stuff and then stepping in trying to hit 95. How how did you tear the labrum in the first place? What would you do? Honestly, it was just from overuse. Um, overuse uh, happened over and over, and then I started to feel it, like, during the beginning of the offseason, just swinging over and over, and I started getting the pain there, and then started to do some tests and stuff like that. Try rehabbing it first, but then it got to the point where I needed surgery. Uh, in order to to be able to be at full go. Yeah. Well, you're back and healthy now. And uh, you came back in 2021 uh, after the pandemic and stuff was done with. And, you you know, you pick up right where you left off. You were you were swinging the bat well. 2022, you uh, get the call to the big leagues. And we always see these viral videos now. It's a, it's, a, it's a popular thing to do of the prospects getting the news and what their reactions are when they find out. How did you get the news uh, that you were getting called up to Cleveland, and uh, did they did they mess with you at all? Did they play any tricks on you, or were they just like very straightforward? Like, get in here, let's talk. Uh, for me, I I um I remember the day very vividly. Um, I was in a Triple A game, uh, I actually just hit a home run, and then I got taken out of the game like right after. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, did I pimp that or did I do something? <laughs> and then after I got taken out, like uh, our AAA manager came up to me and was just like, you know, someone uh, might have got hurt up there. So you got to take you, we have to take you out as a precaution. So I was like, OK, whatever. And then after the game, called me in the office and just said, like, look, you're going up to big leagues. Like, we don't know what your role is yet. Like, just go up there and, and enjoy it and, and try and help the team win. So pretty straightforward. No, no jokes. No, uh no uh, jokes on me luck luckily um so that was how i was told just just business they were like it's yeah, a business just, move you gotta go kid you're out of here <laughs> yeah literally uh who was the first person you called when uh when you got the news uh i just i called my dad uh obviously i knew he'd be like with my mother so i was able to talk to both of them uh and that's when it got pretty surreal and emotional because you know i started thinking about all the all the sacrifices they made and stuff and being able to you know finally be a major league player um, shows that all the stuff that they've done has, has definitely worked out. Now you were talking about, you know, the adrenaline, maybe some butterflies when uh, you were getting out there and doing the modeling. First day you go to a major league stadium, you know, Guardians have one of the best managers of all time and Terry Francona there. I'm sure you've talked to him previously during spring training and stuff, but um, what was that like the first meeting where you're sitting down with, uh, with Francona and talking to him and what were your feelings like when you, you come out of the tunnel for the first time wearing that major league uniform as a big league ball player. Yeah, one of the first things I wanted to do when I when I got to the clubhouse uh, in Los Angeles, uh, actually not in Anaheim, um, I wanted to go in there. Obviously, introduce myself. I knew I knew Frank Corner from spring training, but just want to say hi to him and stuff like that, and then talk to him. And he's like, 
all right, like you're batting seven playing left field today. And I was like, all right, bet. Like, let's do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know. I didn't know I was starting until right there and then until I got to the field. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, going out there, it, pre- it felt, you know, pretty normal to me. Obviously, you know, your heart's beating fast and stuff like that, but it's still the game of baseball. So, like, when I was out there, like, the only thing I was worrying about is being able to, like, produce. Like, be able to produce and help the team win. You don't really think about all the other things during the game. Um, that's only mostly like before the game and after the game. Uh, mm-hmm. So for me, it felt very normal. I um, was able to go out there and, and have a really good game, my first game, which made it a lot easier uh, to, you know, get that weight off my back. Do you remember who was pitching for the Angels that day? Yeah, yeah, I definitely remember my first hit, Michael Lorenzen. My first two hits, actually, off Michael Lorenzen. There you go. Yeah. Can't really forget him with, with his long hair and his band sleeves. That's not something you're going to forget. <laughs> It is muscles. It is muscles. <laughs> I've met him before, and I did a, a fun picture with him where we were, like, arm wrestling just because his arm is, like, three times the size of a normal man's arm. Like, the dude is yeah, yeah. a monster out there. So, uh, oh, yeah. there you go. And who knows? Maybe Michael Lorenzo comes to St. Louis, one of those free agents this year. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about – now, I know you can't get into, you know, who's doing what and what. And, you know, I don't want to get you in any trouble or whatever, but I want to talk about – uh, the trade to St. Louis last year, and then uh, get your opinion on some of the the bigger names that we're hearing about in free agency that are going to be available. So uh, we're going to do that with Richie Palacios next on Locked On Cardinals. Once again, thank you for watching and listening to Locked On Cardinals and uh, making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're joined by St. Louis Cardinals infielder, outfielder, Richie Palacios. Joined the team last year, um, came over from Cleveland. Uh, the Cardinals make this deal for you. And, um, you know, I mean, getting traded can't be an easy thing, especially when you've been with one organization, uh, even though it was a young career so far. It's still the only one you were a part of yet. What was your reaction when uh, you got dealt and how that whole thing played out? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a new experience for me. Uh, definitely a new experience for me. Um, my brother has gone through it a couple of times, um, so he gave me a lot of good advice on that. Um, then it was just about, you know, figuring out where I'm going, who was on the team, uh, being able to get get cool with some of the guys. I knew a couple of the guys, uh, one previously from, from Cleveland, Jose Fermin, and then Juan Yepes just playing against him a lot. Um, so when I heard I was going to AAA and a couple of those guys that I knew were there, it was going to be a cool experience to be able to go out there and all those guys accepted me pretty well. Um, and it was been a, just a blessing ever since, you know, I grew some really strong relationships in that short time I was in AAA and, and in the big leagues too. So St. Louis is an awesome organization and the guys uh, accepted me well. So um, I was able to truly enjoy uh, my time there um, this season. Now, none of us in the real world will know what it's like to be traded. Sure, maybe our jobs transfer people from time to time, but most of us don't know what it's like. And I've always wondered when a a player is dealt, how do you figure out where you're going to live and how does your stuff get to where it needs to be as quickly as they need you? Because, you know, some of these, you'll see these guys and they're in the lineup the next day. Like, how do they, how does that all come to fruition? Yeah, they told me I had pretty much three days to, to get to, uh, to wherever the AAA team was. Um, and uh, I just had to do some logistics first. I was able to get there um, pretty much like two, I think two and a half days later. And then I get there where they were on the road at the time. Um, and then from there, they were going back home, I believe. Yeah, back home. So yeah, just ho- living at a hotel. I got a hotel at first um, in Memphis, trying to figure out how all that went. Um, and then from there on, I was able to, to pre- pretty much figure out where to live and stuff like that. So. It is very stressful, and it's very stressful when you're trying to do it so quickly. But yeah. that's the minor leagues. That's how it's been pretty much my whole career. Um, and now it's a little bit easier with them helping you out. But previously, like, I've dealt with that stuff where you're trying to find a house in the next two days. So it's honestly, sadly, normal <laughs> in the minor leagues. So you, gotta just you can see it in it. your face right now. You're like, dude, I hope I don't have to do it anymore. It sucks. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like a miserable. I know what it's like just moving. Like the last place I lived in town, I was like less than a mile away, and we just moved up a hill, and that was stressful. So I can't yeah, imagine I picking up everything you own and trying to get it to someplace else. And then 
lo and behold, you end up getting called up to the Cardinals. Uh, and now you're in the big leagues again. And I'm curious who were the first person you got a chance to, to sit down and talk to outside of the coaching staff. Cause I know, you know, Ali and the guys probably, you know, Hey, let's chit chat or whatever, but who was like the, the first teammate that sparked up a conversation with you when you finally got the call up to St. Louis? Uh, honestly, that day was such a blur. I mean, I showed up. So the game, I think, was at about 6.30. And I got the call that morning that I was uh, had to get to St. Louis. You know, I, they got me a car, ser- car service and all that. And I, like, arrived to the field, like, at, like, 5.30. <laughs> so with an hour until the game. So I'm just trying to, like, figure out what's going on. Like, everyone is not worried about me. They're worried about getting ready for the game. And I'm not worried about meeting anyone. I'm worried about getting ready for the game. So, like, getting the uniform and all that stuff. And, like, first time I met 95% of the players was in the dugout, like, before <laughs> the game. And I'm just, like, dapping up everyone, like, that's in the game. I'm not playing. And they're probably just, like, oh, wow, who's this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, we're able to talk to some of the guys during the game. Um, I think and I ended up pinch hitting that day. Uh, so it was it was a lot, a lot, and it was so quick, but it was it was definitely a cool experience. So most of the guys I met in the dugout during the game, just chatting up, but still trying to focus on on the game and when I was going to come in. Yeah, you'll see those the, the footage of like when new players get traded and they're coming in, they're like, hey, look at that, we got a new guy. This is great. Yeah, so, everyone, uh, everyone's like, what's up? And they're like, oh, we <laughs> don't know you yet. <laughs> what's your name again? What'd you say, kid? I don't, I don't know you. Uh, yeah. All right, so then you're so now you're on the team. You're ready to roll. Um, and again, most of us don't know what the grind of being a professional ball player is. As much as you guys are moving around and squeezing so much into uh, you know a few hours before a game starts, um, behind the scenes preparation obviously very important for every ball player. What's like a daily routine for you on on a game day where you wake up? What's the first kind of things you do before you get headed down to to the stadium? Yeah, for me, I wake up, I read my Bible, and I pray. That's the first thing I do every day. Uh, and then I go out, try and get breakfast, either order it or drive and get it. Um, pretty much take that to the field. Get to the field. I like to be the first guy in the cage. Or I try to be the first guy in the cage. Um, get in the cage, do my just normal routine, go outside from there, usually eat, and then go back out, do some early defensive work. Um, you pretty much do that uh, as much as I can. Then go back and go back into the dugout. I mean, into the locker room, chill a little bit, and then usually the time where we all go out as a team, have our team meeting, and then we do team stretch, and then into BP, into the game, on um, pretty standard after that. But yeah, I just like to be one of the first guys in there. And you being somebody who can play both, because you do outfield, you do infield, so uh, you know you're you're meeting up with. Not only the hitting coach Turner Ward, but you're also doing stuff with like Willie McGee and uh, you know working on different drills at different spots. Do you have a position like if you had to choose one? I know it's not easy because you're like I just want to play, I have fun. But like, do you have a specific one that you enjoy playing more? Because I played infield through college, but then I got stuck in the outfield a few times, and I'm just kind of like I don't know. I felt like I was away from everything a lot when I was in the outfield. Where infield, I felt more in tune with what was going on in the game. Do you have a preference at all? No, no, I don't. Each of them have have their own little like perks, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, second base infield, like you feel like you're right in the action. Um, yeah. but in the outfield you feel like a safety. Uh I never played football, but you feel like a safety, you just get to run things down. So, you know, each position has its own perks and and I know I like each of them for their for their own perks, so it's pretty cool. Um, now we know that this off season for the Cardinals is going to be an important one after the, the disappointing year that they had. And, uh, the word is that they're going out after a lot of pitching. Everybody said it. John Moselock said, everybody knows it's not, it's not a secret. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of names here and I'm just curious your feedback on what kind of pitcher they are. I just want to get a little quick Richie Palacios scouting report on what you think of these pitchers. Because, um, you know, the, the guy that we haven't seen a lot of them, uh, a few of them have been in the National League for a while, but a couple of them you saw more while you were in the AL Central. So uh, let's start with, uh, how about Blake Snell? Blake Snell, what, what can you tell us about going up against somebody like Blake Snell? Blake Snell never faced him, but the man has done, he's done amazing things in the league. So, I mean, he's a dog. I never faced him, uh, but he, he's done well, so. 
Now, when you see footage of him, uh, curveball, fastball, which one would you worry more about if you were getting ready to step into the box against him because he's filthy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to you got to be on the heater. You can't, you know, be sitting there waiting for the curveball, waiting for all speed. You got to be on the heater. Um, and if you're able to hit that, it should make the other things a little bit easier. But it's still a tough fastball with ride cut. So Aaron Nola from the Phillies, who pitched pretty well against the Cardinals this year. He had, did have one game where you guys got him pretty good, but uh, has been up for Cy Young Awards multiple times. Uh, what can you tell us about going up against somebody like Nola? He's just a good pitcher overall. I mean, his stuff is good, but it's not only that. He just locates. Um, he has a different profile than a lot of guys that low approach, but he's able to locate a lot of his pitches. So they seem like they're good pitches to hit out the hand. And then they're either swinging misses or just miss barrel because of where they're placed. So he's, he's been a good pitcher and he's pitched well, um, against us and definitely in the playoffs as well. Uh, a name that has been brought up a lot. He's with the White Sox now, but you know, there's rumors that he could get traded and obviously he's been very good over the years. Dylan Cease with the Sox. Uh, have you ever had a chance to go up against him? Never faced Cease. I didn't. Uh, when I was last year, I never played against the White Sox. Never had okay. any V's against the White Sox. Um, we played them a ton, but it just so happened that like every time we played them, I was in the minor leagues. Um, but like I said, yeah, I mean his his resume speaks for itself. I never faced him, but uh, his resume speaks for himself. And uh, how about Sonny Gray from the uh, Minnesota Twins? You ever had a chance to face him? I've probably faced every single starter on the Twins except for Sonny Gray. <laughs> like, it's it's so funny that I faced a lot. I faced the Twins a ton last year with Cleveland, um, a ton of pinch hit at bats, a couple starts here and there, and I've faced pretty much every right-handed starter but Sonny Gray. All right. Uh, what do you know about – the the guys that because we're talking about the Japanese guys did Lars ever say anything about some of these guys that are coming over like the Yamamoto's or Matsui's as if uh have you have you gotten to to bone up on any information about those guys? Oh yeah, Lars tells us a lot of things um about those guys <laughs> being able to play with them and stuff, and that's just just secret information, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> secret info um that is just kept kept close to home. But yeah, he's tell he tells us a lot a lot about those guys, and we like to ask him because it's pretty cool. Um, being able to just we just see videos and stuff like that. But you know, Lars is able to play with a lot of those guys, so he tells us his inside scoop. Yeah, that's cool. And you got a chance to uh, play in the World Baseball Classic with the Netherlands. What was your experience with that? Oh, it was awesome. You playing in Taiwan, being able to see you know the different culture. Um, but you know how baseball is still, you know, played awesome, played with so much, you know, love, so much passion, and and the crowd over there was was unbelievable. They had a they sing pretty much a walk up song for every single hitter on the team, has their own walk up song. It was just like a party uh, on the baseball field, so it was definitely a, a new experience for me, um, and it was an awesome experience for me being able to see that culture and see how they how they still love the game in baseball. So if if I'm at a ball game, if I want to get the fans going, what would you want us to sing to you as you step up to the plate? What would you what would you like from us? <laughs> um, that's a great question. Uh, for <laughs> me, I would say uh, whatever's on your guys' heart, whatever you guys sing well, you know. As long as it's from the heart, I'll be like, yeah, I can swing, I can hit to this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because I saw you know during the playoffs you got the Phillies and they're always singing when uh, when one of their oh, guys came up. up. The yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Stott song. So we gotta, we, I mean, we gotta come up with something for you, something that's like you know, kind of a chant or something, just to uh, you know, get the vibes get, going for you while you yeah, step into that vibes. box. Oh yeah, get the crowd into <laughs> it. We would love that. All right, well, we'll work on that. I'll get a hold of some people, and we'll see what we can get done for you. Uh, Richie, I really do appreciate you making time today to uh, join us and talk some ball. And uh, good luck out there uh, on the course today if you end up doing that. And obviously, hopefully, we get a chance to uh, talk to you uh, before spring training starts or maybe during the regular season or something. We'd love to have you back at some point. Oh, I appreciate you having me, J.D. Appreciate it. I had a good time. So thank you a lot. All right, Richie Palacios from your St. Louis Cardinals. Once again, thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Again, you can follow uh, Richie on Twitter, X as well. See his wonderful modeling videos and photos and stuff. Sexy stuff, man. I'm telling you. Uh, like, subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans of baseball for a reason. We'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.